Amid the rolling hills of West Virginia and bordering the Monongahela River, the town of Morgantown lay strangling. Strangling in the snarled traffic, clogged streets, overflowing parking lots, and growing clouds of air pollution. A town with a population of little over 50,000 and the transportation problems of a city of millions. An urban trend nightmare, compounded by the complexities of scattered centers of transitory people. Home of the century-old West Virginia University, its campuses lay miles apart. The main campus in the heart of downtown Morgantown, six schools and colleges on the Evansdale campus, and the medical center with its four schools and teaching hospital on yet another site. Adding to the congestion was the university's neatly dividing the city's business district and a rapidly growing residential area. Only two through streets connected the two centers. Five days a week, 18,000 students and 6,000 faculty and staff competed on the two thoroughfares in an attempt to move from campus to campus. Hour-long trips to cover a two-mile distance were not uncommon. West Virginia University tried to alleviate the problem by instituting an extensive bus system, but wound up only adding to the congestion. In the mid-1960s, the university sought a way out from under the ever-growing traffic burden. While WVU was involved in researching possible solutions, the United States Department of Transportation was initiating development and demonstrations in new transit systems. As Morgantown exhibited all the inherent difficulties shared by many larger cities, it was a logical site to test a new concept, personal rapid transit, or as it became later known, the Morgantown People Mover. Through the cooperation of West Virginia University and the Urban Mass Transit Administration, funding was secured for the People Mover with the Boeing Aerospace Company of Seattle, Washington, responsible for the design and construction. In 1971, contracts were awarded and work was started on the system. Construction began on phase one of the People Mover, linking the downtown and main campus area with the Evansdale campus. Nearly five and a half miles of guideway was built, lacing around the buildings in the business district, above the automobile and pedestrian traffic, easing to ground level outside the congestion along the banks of the Monongahela. Three stations were built along the guideway in two varieties. The central station permits the system vehicles to either stop to load and unload passengers or pass through, unimpeded, to another station down the line. The other, a turnaround, or end of the line. Along the guideways would travel the small, electric, driverless cars. With operations totally under computer control, the system is compared to an elevator that moves horizontally. Each vehicle has the capacity to travel non-stop from departure to destination, directed by the passenger at the touch of a button at the terminal. The capabilities of the cars, the design of the guideways, and the flexibility of the computer programs allows the system to operate in two distinct modes, scheduled and demand. 